Good morning and welcome. Happy Easter. If this is your first time to join us at Rain Tree Christian Church, we are so glad to have you. I wanted to let you know that if you have a prayer request that you would like to share, you can send that to our connections minister, Matt Spitzberg, at the email address below. Again, we are so glad you're here this morning. Easter is one of my favorite Sundays. It reminds me of one of my first times I was in children's ministry and I was teaching our three and four year olds class and we had just sat down in a circle and shared the gospel story with these three and four year olds. And there was this one little particular guy that you could tell it was the first time or the, he hadn't been at church in a long time and he had heard that story. And when we got to the point where um, Jesus walked out of the tomb and the tomb was empty, this little three-year-old jumps up from the circle and goes, are you kidding? Jesus is alive? And we all just kind of looked and said, yeah, he is. And he goes, I mean, you're telling me he died and now he's alive? And we said, yeah, he is. And he was like, that's the coolest. And I just remember thinking, um, when was the last time that we really heard this message of Jesus being alive and well and conquering death? Um, and received it in that sort of way with such excitement and exuberance. I pray that this morning that you get that feeling um, as we worship and sing together and even as we break bread with one another. Let me pray while we get started. Father God, you are so good. We come to you this morning and we proclaim your holiness, your faithfulness, and your conquering over death. Lord, I pray that this morning um, our worship would be pleasing to you. Um, however that's happening in our homes, Lord, I pray that um, it would bring honor and glory to you, Lord. Um, be with us um, as we celebra celebrate your resurrection and uh, help us to anticipate um, that coming again soon, Lord. We love you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. As usual, we just want to encourage you guys, uh, wherever you may be watching this and uh, worshiping with us, to sing along with us. The words will be down at the bottom of the screen as uh, as we begin. So let's let's worship together.
Good morning, church. Hear the word of the Lord this morning from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. He, Jesus the Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For everything was created by him in heaven, on earth, the visible and the invisible, Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have everything, to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile everything to himself, whether in things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated and hostile in your minds, expressed in your evil actions, but now, Now he has reconciled you by his physical body through his death to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before him. If indeed you remain grounded and steadfast in faith and are not shifted away from hope of the gospel that you have heard, this gospel has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and under earth. And I, Paul, we have become a servant of this gospel.
Thank you for a, a, a morning together. Um, though we may be separated in uh, proximity, God, we are together in your spirit. And we are so thankful for a time to just worship your name, worship your resurrection, just, just the amazing miracle of you defeating death. God, may we never lose the excitement and the passion for that moment in history, for it has forever changed our lives and forever change this world. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy Easter. Welcome to our Easter Sunday. Like so many of you, um, I find this time and all the things that are taking place right now bizarre. Uh, there seems to have been this cloud of tension that just seems to just sit over so many things that are going on in our world today, over so many relationships, over what comes next with confusion and anxiety. And it feels weird to be celebrating Easter with, with so many church buildings seemingly closed, with church memberships scattered across this city and across the globe. And I would want to give you a couple of thoughts as we jump into Easter Sunday. Buildings may be closed. Church memberships may be scattered. We can lament and celebrate in the same breath. We can lament the things that have yet to be redeemed by Jesus the Christ, and we can celebrate the things that have, and we can hold these two things together in the same breath, and maybe, just maybe, we find a different worldview rather than church memberships, the saints of Jesus the Christ, the believers, the ones like you and I, whose every breath proclaims the beauty of Jesus, being in buildings, congregating, we are thoroughly scattered and covering this world today. There's a beauty in that. There's something to lament that we're not together, but there is also a beauty in the fact that our witness is covering this earth. This morning, maybe, maybe our circumstances powered by the Spirit of God can proclaim an eternal victory in the freshest of ways, not just to our hearts, but also to our communities. Let's, let's start our textual and theological grounding here today. Many of us know the phrase, go big or go home. Consider for a moment the proclamations 
that stem from Easter Sunday. Consider for a moment, in light of go big or go home, consider for a moment the proclamations that we, the church, proclaim because of our surrender to Jesus Christ. Today we say that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is God, that Jesus can and is redeeming and healing all things. That Jesus cannot be killed. That Jesus' love always defeats death. That Jesus' love always defeats fear. That Jesus' love can and is overwhelming all sin. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. That the totality of humanity can do its worst to Jesus Christ and to each other. But grace breaks through. It always breaks through. That nothing can stop God from redeeming his people or his creation. That the eternal power of the lion is seen and experienced in the meekness of a sacrificed lamb. That people are not enemies, but evil was the enemy. That the church is and still can be a physical witness to the perfect love of Jesus the Christ. That the spirit of Christ is living and moving and directing the people of God. That no thing and no person is irredeemable because of Jesus' love. That surrendering fully to Jesus is the only way to find and experience real and eternal life. These are go big or go home statements. And it's all, of what, it's all because of what Jesus allowed to happen to him and then what God did three days later. After the trial, the beating, The crucifixion and the burial of Jesus, Luke writes these words beginning in Luke chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them, in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking? Why are you looking? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was, in, when he was still in Galilee, saying, It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all of the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles all of these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them. And they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. And when he stopped to look in, he saw only linen clothes. So he went away amazed at what, he had, at what had happened. The question that sits at the heart of this passage has so much power. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And truthfully, If we wrestle with, if we allow our hearts to be permeated with this question, this question still reorients the life of Christians today. We've made all sorts of bold proclamations about Jesus and God and the spirit and the beauty of the new creation. But oftentimes we struggle to figure out how the resurrection of Jesus impacts each and every day in our relationships, almost like the resurrection of Jesus is something that happened and it doesn't really impact today. But whenever Jesus does come back, then it's going to impact things. I want to dive into that for a little bit. I feel like Knowing the Rain Tree Church, knowing you guys as well as I, I feel like I know you. 
that we, the church, cognitively believe that Jesus has been resurrected. We cognitively believe that he's alive, and we cognitively, cognitively believe that he's ruling. We cognitively believe that God has defeated all evil, and we cognitively believe that Christ will return to perfect all of creation and to establish his perfect reign. We preach these beliefs. We pray these beliefs. We sing these beliefs. We verbalize these beliefs to others in times of crisis or suffering. Today, Easter is defined by divine love and grace, and I'm asking you to do some critical thinking. Do you still look for ways to live among the dead ways of an old, broken world? Consider that for a moment. Do we still look for ways to live among the dead ways of an old, broken world? See, the resurrection of Jesus charges us. It charges us to see the old, broken world for what it truly is. It is an existence, not life. It's an existence, even in communities, amongst systems, even government systems that are defined by fear and power and manipulation and selfishness and death. And when we seek life in the old world, we end up with more of the same, more of the same junk that's in our own hearts, that sits within our own relationships and ends up still driving so many of our communities and our societies. Christians believe and not just cognitively, but with our actions, that the resurrection of Jesus the Christ has ushered in a new creation with ways of living that match the new creation. We're not putting new wine into old wineskins. As followers of Christ, we want creation's total transformation, not just a sprinkling of a little bit of Jesus here and there on some of the things that we really would rather not give over. We don't want a sprinkling of Jesus upon an old world. We want new upon new upon new. And so what does that look like on an each an everyday basis. What does Easter Sunday, what does a resurrection mentality look like? Considering where we are in Luke, I think we could go back to Luke chapter 1 and get a good picture. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary. He tells her that the Holy Spirit is going to miraculously bring life through her that she will be the mother of the Messiah. She will birth the king who will end all kingdoms. And to Mary's amazing credit, she simply and humbly just, she just believes. She travels to her family and sees Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And Elizabeth blesses Mary she blesses her because of her faith, and then Mary just spontaneously breaks into song. We know this song is the Magnificat. I want to read that for you this morning, and I want you to notice some things. Listen to language. Listen to verbs. My soul praises the greatness of the Lord, and my soul rejoices in God my Savior, because he has looked with favor on the humble condition of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed because the mighty one has done great things for me and for his holy name. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. Now listen, catch this. He has done a mighty deed with his arm. He has scattered the proud because of the thoughts of their hearts. He has toppled the mighty from their thrones and he has exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he spoke to our ancestors. Halfway through Mary's great song, 
She begins speaking about God's eternal future as though it defines her very presence. First, she praises God for what he's done, and then, because of her faith in God's promises, she starts singing as though the promised future is defining the here and now. All of her present circumstances, according to her song, are now defined by the eternal victory of God, which will come through this very Jesus. This is the worldview of Christians. This is the filter for perceiving our world even today. You and I, because of Jesus and his resurrection, we live presently by the truth and victory of God's eternal future. The war, hear this, please hear this today. The war between good and evil is over. Christ has won it for all of creation. Love has won. When Jesus walked up out of the grave, he stripped fear and sin and death of all their powers. And if that's the case, if that's the case, if we truly believe that, not just cognitively, but with our actions, We don't fight battles that belong to a broken world. We don't play the old world games of power and manipulation and pride and self-centeredness. People are not our enemies. And we do not engage in battles against others. Because of Jesus the Christ, we see the world in a completely new way. Paul reminds us of this in Ephesians chapter 6 when he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in heavens. We may struggle to use Paul's language even today with the remaining forces, hear me, the remaining forces of evil in an old, broken-down world. But the war is over. And if the war is over, we don't fight earthly battles. We do not look for ways of living among ways defined by death. Please hear me say that. Think about Jesus the Christ walking up out of the grave and all of the things that it means for us. We do not look for ways of living among the ways defined by death. We continuously seek and follow the way of life, the man we call Jesus, the giver of wisdom and strength and truth and real security. I want desperately to encourage you today. Keep surrendering yourself fully to the Christ. And the product of your surrender will be an Easter Sunday resurrection mentality each and every day. And in so many ways, you will come to look like the Christ. Maybe we can even follow in the ways of Mary. As the mother of Jesus, here's the good news spontaneously breaks into song and sings in her present a knowledge and a faith of what is to come. As we close out today, as we mentioned, and hopefully you got to see the video that was given to you uh, this last Thursday, we want to share in a time of the Lord's Supper, even though we are scattered And I want you to communally engage this Easter Sunday in communion with this thought. How does Jesus' eternal victory, how does the perfected kingdom that is to come, how does that truth define and guide your every day, your family, your job? How you view relationships? I want to pray blessings over you. I want to pray blessings over your conversation. And I want you today, 
as Christians are scattered across the globe to spontaneously break into song because Jesus the Christ is living, alive, and we have been given an Easter Sunday resurrection mentality. We love y'all a ton. Hear this prayer as our love for you, and may it guide your conversations. God bless our church. God bless the church. Bless us with power from your spirit. Bless us with confidence in your faithfulness. Bless us with the knowledge that we look like your son because we have received his redemption. Bless us, God, with the courage to submit and to surrender to you. And God, may you bless the world with any fruit that comes from it. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the life that we have. And thank you for defining us with your love. It is through the Christ that we live and breathe. Amen.